Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. This is a tough episode. It's a different episode. It's a strange episode. I'm gonna discuss about two titans, amplification at its maximum quality. There are issues, there are flaws, there are amazing technologies behind these. And I wanted to compare and trying to understand what is happening and why some products of a specific house of Hegel are so renowned, are so incredibly popular. And what is my take on that? Okay, guys, let's start. Okay, so, yes, a lot of you wrote me, you have to try the Hegel amplifiers, you have to try the H590, uh, absolutely, and actually if you go around, out and about, reading reviews, reading journals, papers, listening to YouTube videos, podcasts, forums, people are going crazy for their products. Hence, I couldn't resist. I found an excellent deal, and here we are. I got an H590, and I've been listening to it intensively for several days, I would say. But just after the first hour, I knew exactly what was happening. At least, what follows is my obviously my personal opinion, my personal thoughts, but I do think it's useful and I do think I want to, it is uh, right to express my opinions, my point of view on this. So, what is the point here? Well, as I said, Hegel and especially this machine are incredibly popular and I perfectly understand why. I mean, Bent Holter, who uh, created Hegel, I mean, he is the genius behind uh, the patent technology inside these because he they actually started creating this technology and they wanted to sell it to others but that didn't work so they started to make their own and boy if it did uh, he created obviously different things but the main the main aspect I would say the core is the sound engine too uh, and that is giving amazing results in their products uh, practically if you don't know anything about it there's an excellent video by uh, by Darko by John Darko I'll put a link here below where there is a, a lecture of uh, Halter where he is explaining everything very useful you perfectly understand what they're doing in their amplifiers at least the declared facts and uh, in fact they're practically canceling the old concept other people also are doing it of the negative feedback. They're trying to correct. They adjust all the different problems. They're trying to, like inverting phase, to eliminate all types of distortion. And that obviously is gonna bring amazing results since amplification does amplify also distortion. And they found a way to uh, reduce, greatly reduce that. As well as also this dynamic crossover they have, uh, bringing this incredible damping factor five I mean four thousand I'm sorry four thousand damping factor my Luxman is 300 and something I think so with that type of damping factor oh baby you're you're keeping your dog with a steel leash and you're moving it however you want instead of a flappy little cotton leash or elastic leash no 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 whatever your hand is doing the dog is doing okay that's the same with the amplifier with with the speakers it's moving it whenever music is giving a signal and i am finding that absolutely i was flattered i was completely blown out of the water when i heard the control of specific sounds of the bass for example of uh, even the, the higher notes when they attack the attack and decay attack and decay it's very very precise 
And that is something that I actually I did never find I've never found in other amplifiers. But but there are some issues, in my opinion. And I'll tell you what, very simple, very straightforward. The impression I have is that the sound that is coming is partitioned. It's separated in compartments. I can clearly hear different things at top quality, but they're not intermingled. They're not working together. This is obviously a sensation I have. My ears are telling me this. It's almost like people are uh, doing their session in different rooms. They've been recording in different rooms, not all together. So I have the, the lower end, the mid, and the high register all separated. It's very, very strange. Plus, I feel something strange in the mid-range, I must admit. In fact, I think this baby shines in the lower and the top end. In the mid, so-so. Uh, and something uh, that shocked me is that the reproduction of digital music, and I'm not talking, I'm not using the converter, okay guys? I'm still using my Holo Audio May when I did the test. Obviously, I also tested their digital um, DAC, and I'll talk about that after. But I'm talking simply of the signal, analog signal, coming in here from my DAC, but sourced from CDs or other high-resolution digital media. That sounded excellent. It sounded digital. No problem. Excellent. Fantastic. I do sense that separation, artificial separation, which I think comes from certain algorithms, certain programming, certain uh, passages that the analog signal is undergoing, which creates a little bit of this artificially cre recreation of the sound. Again, I have no idea what's going there. I am not a technician, so this is just my simple opinion and I'm trying to express it, okay? So take it for what it is. But I have the sensation. Instead, when I put my turntable, when I put an analog source, so vinyl, we're talking about vinyl, I also tried different types of phono preamplifiers in order to, to make sure it wasn't that. I tried different cartridges. And I got this result amplified, and at the same time, this is what was shocking me, it sounds like a CD. It sounds digital. A good digital, an excellent digital, but digital. Very, very precise, which I'm sure some people would say, good, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I mean, everything is so precise, so aligned, the timing, the, as I said, the attack and decay, attack and decay is very perfect, it's very neat. But it doesn't sound natural. It does not sound natural. I kept unplugging here my stuff, putting the Hegel down, putting back my Luxman, and doing this comparison over and over. And every time I put back the Luxman, I was hearing less perfection in that attack and decay, less perfection in the control of the music, okay, of the loudspeakers. In fact, it was a little more smudged, absolutely. That's where this shines, but it was coherent. It was engaging. It got me going, it got me moving. It sounded analog, it sounded good. High quality analog, but it did sound an analog. And the CD sounded digital, as it's supposed to be, in my opinion. So this, for me, was rather shocking, I must admit, because I do understand why people are ripping their hair off on this. But if you pause a sec and you and you're understand what you're hearing, at least, as again, in my opinion, it is something that it does not sound natural. I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for this video. A lot of people are gonna think I'm crazy. This is an 11,000 euro amplifier. <laughs> That's about $13,000 in Europe. I got it for much, much less. In any case, this is what it is. That's what it costs. The Luxman goes for around 9,000 euro, which is approximately, I don't know, $11,000, something like that. So we're below. But the Luxman just wins me over. And I, in fact, gonna sell this. I'm sorry to say so. I was ready to go with Hegel, <clears throat> ready to jump in the new team. But it's just not 
my piece of cake or my cup of tea. I, I saw another video which was interesting where another guy was saying something similar. I'll put the link here below uh, just to hear someone else talking about it. He sold it his as well. I'm not saying you have to sell it. I'm not saying this is not good. Okay, guys, this is important. It's amazingly good, but it does have in my opinion, some issues, some limitations in the recreation of analog music, especially analog music. I, I sense this artificial separation also in digital, obviously. I mean, that's the amplification is what it is. So this is present on all types of, of sources. The last thing I wanna say is even the, uh, the digital to analog conversion, the DAC inside, a lot of people claim, oh, it's, it's value, it's three, four times, it's amazing, it's impressive, you're gonna throw everything out. Well, I must admit that the Holo Audio May kicked ass. No, no comparison, I mean, no comparison. The May, after it's two or three months of burning, is just amazing, the layers of detail and the way it recreates the scenario, the, the, the different instruments all together in a coherent manner. It's just fantastic. I must admit that every every month that passes get, just gets better and better. It's an excellent DAC, but it's, I think, an overstatement what has been people, what, what people are seeing in different, in different places. It depends where you're comparing it to it, obviously. I mean, the May is top of the tops. So if you come from a normal DAC, you're obviously gonna rip your hair off. It, it, it all depends from your point of view and what you're comparing it to, obviously. In any case, ears do count for me. They do a lot. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't kill me. I love you all. Peace and love. And remember, music was born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.